The nominations for our Radio Creative Feature Award came from across the world. The breadth and depth of work submitted demonstrates that the power of radio to amaze and entertain remains as strong as ever. We travel to Australia for an ABC Radio National production, Will Kate Survive Kate? This story intimately chronicles a year in the life of 29-year-old Kate, who has anorexia nervosa. Dear Eating Disorder, Thank you for always being there for all these years. You gave me control when everything felt so out of control. When I didn't think I could cope for one more day with all the anxiety and feeling so depressed, you were there to grasp onto when I felt like I was drowning. With every kilogram lost, every calorie burnt or restricted, I felt stronger and more in control. Deutsche Welle's Learning by Ear strand includes a radio soap opera, Crossroads Generation. It's a series for DW's young listeners in Africa. It's written in English and produced in six languages. I just did my job, that's all. Shame on you. I can't feel Dr. Vito. I can't see you. You killed my daughter. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Um, uh, please step into my office. Trudy, I'm scared. Did you hear what that lady said? Marcy, don't be ridiculous. Come on. Hello, Marcy. I see you finally made a decision. Radio Taiwan International is nominated for its historical drama, Lost in Dutch Formosa. It tells the story of a family from today who travel back in time to Taiwan in the 1600s. The series offers contrasting soundscapes of Taiwan in the 21st century and Formosa in the 17th. Close your eyes and imagine that we're standing inside Fort Zealandia looking out over the bay when all of a sudden we see some ships on the horizon. Chinese junks. It's the Chinese warlord, Coxinga, and he's coming to kick the Dutch out of Formosa. Last Christmas, listeners to News Talk ZB in New Zealand were transported back in time to Judea in 1 BC. News Talk BC was an hour of talkback radio that split time in two. Many of the participants were well-known New Zealand personalities, from the Prime Minister down. She gave birth. I guess they'll just have to tuck the little one away in a manger, and, I mean, there's no crib for a bed. Yeah, and it would be tough with the cattle lowing, I mean, if the baby awakes. Hey, Timothy, just last thing, quickly as, because I really do need to move on. There have been a lot of calls coming in about a bright light in the sky. Have you seen anything out your way? Now, don't get me started on that one. I swear the damn thing feels like it's directly overhead. Radio Canada produced an intriguing evening of music that was part concert and part theatre. Fréquence OSM 2 was the unauthorised audio biography of the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, charting its life from its foundation in 1934 right through until, well, 2034. Quelque chose de magique se produisait à chaque fois. Et c'est grâce au panache de ces amoureux de la musique un peu fou, à leur vieille brouette, à une douzaine d'épis de blé d'Inde et au courage des musiciens qui survécurent au crack, que Montréal peut se vanter d'avoir, depuis 1934, son orchestre symphonique. Mon orchestre In ABC Radio National's Brixton Ballads, Brent Clough produced a location-based documentary recorded in the South London suburb of Brixton. It examined the phenomenon of social music and the role that sound systems played in spreading information, news and reggae music Brixton hot. across the migrant Jamaican community in post-war Britain. This is the Victoria Line train to Brixton. Party time in Brixton. Yeah, no. You know, you don't really get that much trouble down here anymore. I've only ever stayed in Brixton for a few months in total. But it's a more vivid and meaningful place to me than anywhere outside of Australasia. 